So, uh, should we start from here? No, I don't believe we should. Let's have a little bit of introduction before we go to the TK secrets. <laughs> TK created a great mystery because of his invention and a number of researchers and the people around the world decided that they want to give a try <laughs> find out how to make it and what is it about and uh, eventually uh, find out what they can do for themselves and for others And then finally, Wesley decided to go to Georgia <laughs> to meet with this beautiful man. Uh, yeah, you see me sitting uh, with him and talking to him. Wanted to see how the truth looked like, and I found out that it looks like. It looks like a truth. It's not a joke. You're approaching a time in which, possibly, till the year 2012 end, we will be able to completely change the course of the energy. Yeah, that's him. The course of the people life. <laughs> now, he promised me here that he's gonna give it to the people. He didn't do it as of yet. Uh, it's a very much dependent man, but one of the major reasons is that he is very much disappointed. He found a lot of greed in people's hearts and dishonesty. Yeah, he is willing to give to the humanity, and he confirms it right now, yeah, okay. So, in this video I'm gonna try to concentrate on the theory, how it is possible, at least part of the theory, that, that energy could exist, that it looks like completely from nothing. This is a very nice article explaining the basic order theory at www. It's a ham radio operator, so I appreciate that. What it shows is the simple sine wave, which has the amplitude from zero point to the maximum, and the wavelength is the full sine, starting from here to over there. This basic sine wave is an energy that looks like as it travels. There will be sound waves, radio waves, even light waves, in sound waves. You will notice that in the first picture that we've seen, there are vertical and horizontal lines through the center. So, we put those there to help us graph the sine wave on paper, to better understand that. The horizontal line through the center is zero. Any portion of the wave above is graphed as a positive number, and everything below is the line as negative number. So you see direction. So now you see the time factor delta p. You see the positive and you see the negative part of it. So let's say that a singer uh, sings a pitch of C1. A second singer sings C2, one octave higher which is exactly twice as high as the first note, but both singers are signing the same value. So the blue sine wave is the base of the note that it, the red is exactly double. The horizontal line through the middle is zero, as the wave travels follow the red line each time it passes zero mark. Every other time the red wave passes zero, it collides with the blue wave. This means that the red wave moves up and down twice as much as the blue wave. One might say that the red wave vibrates with more frequency than the blue one. This is what frequency is. It measures the frequency how many times the sine wave completes one 
full cycle in one second. So now we have a cycle per second. This is a one cycle because as you follow the wave path, it starts from zero, goes positive, swings to negative, and starts back up positive. The frequency is how many cycles are completed in one second. Frequency is measured in hertz, which is one cycle, one second is referred as one hertz. Three cycles in one second is three hertz and I'm going to try to refer to this beautiful article, Amplitude versus Frequency. Now that the amplitude of the wave has nothing to do with the frequency and vice versa, once the wave is generated, the frequency will not change as it passes through space. There are things like a Doppler shift that will cause the perceived frequency to change, but there is advance beyond the scope of this article that I'm mentioning. And for basic purposes, let us say that once the wave is generated, the frequency does not change. In the vacuum of space, with nothing to impact, the wave is at zero resistance. And the amplitude will not change either. Theoretically, a radio wave then must pass the atmosphere, go on forever until it hits something on the air. It's a quite different story. But on this graph that you see right now, you see two frequencies, one is red, one is blue, and the only difference is the magnitude of the amplitude. So we might say, if the red one is 10 volts, the blue one is exactly half of it. We're talking about 5 volts measured from zero point of the time, this is the time, and the maximum of the peak. Think about the sine wave as the circle moving in time. The T represents the time, X represents the vertical pattern of three-dimensional space, and Y represents the other. You have a mathematical equation that are in here. We're not going to concentrate on them. A lower part of the circle representing the lower part of the curve of the sine wave and the upper part of the circle representing the upper part of the sine wave. When from zero line, which is our horizontal line of reference, vector starts to move up to the maximum. Then we build the charge and the sine wave starts to build. Then when it approaches maximum, it goes down. This part of the sine wave is to be considered dissipation of energy. This sign, this part of the sign, is considered to be a building energy. Now what is happening at the lower part? We know that vector is going this way. From that part, point, to here, we're building energy. And from that point in here, we're dissipating energy. Someone might say, no, there is no dissipation, it's a continuous of the sine wave. Yes, I would agree with that. I use the word dissipation as it will be utilized later on in our lecture. As you rotate into the third quadrant, the change into the height now reverses itself and starts to decrease towards zero. At that point, we have a vector perfectly vertical, and that is the highest point of the amplitude of the sine wave. But from z zero point to point at 180 degrees opposite, we have exactly the same maximum amplitude of the sine wave, only it is opposite in charge. At that point, where we have a vector, vector passing the highest point of the amplitude, that part is amplitude going down to the zero point, and then building itself for the sine wave, again, at minus part of the curve. 
in our application. Passing the zero point for us is too late to fetch the input. The major part is to fetch it right at that point before it approaches. I remember words that TK told me once. Don't let the impulse die. You divide impulse is a defect. Catch it right after you get it from the secondary of the transformer. Now, the transformer words is a transforming, does not really specify a physical device. It's any form of transformation that will give us ability to catch that impulse exactly at that point. We said before. We have a horizontal line, which is this one. And this is the angle. We have the vertical line Y, but we do not have X. This is two-dimensional representation of the curvature that is created by rotation of the vector starting from zero point to the edge of the circle in time. So right now there is nothing on the graph. In the second circle we see angle rotation equals 29 degrees. And that's exactly what is happening here. Building the sine wave counterclockwise right now. Counterclockwise. We can build the clockwise as well. So now our graph is giving us a part of the sine wave. When the angle of the rotation equals 75, now we see a very much significant curvature that is building. Let's say we passed a 90 degrees and we go to 45 degrees of the left hand side, whatever. And that is being called wavelength, one fourth of the wavelength. One fourth of the wavelength is presented in here at this part. It's a half wavelength. This is another half wavelength. So let's say three and a half megahertz is the frequency of the wave that could be also electromagnetic wave that is at length of 80 meters. 160 meters then would be twice 80 meters. So what we did, we made the wave longer but at the same time we decreased the frequency. So now we have 1.6 megahertz. So let's go different way. Let's say we're not satisfied with 80 meters, we want to cut it on half. Now we have a 40 meters. 40 meters will then be 7 megahertz. Simple mathematics. And 7 and 7 megahertz is 14 megahertz. So 14 megahertz would be 20 meters. Very easy. 20 meters is 14 megahertz. So the wavelength of 14 megahertz is 20 meters. Now divided by 4. Each one fourth of 20 meters will be one quarter of the wavelength. We approach almost end of the circle, which gives us exactly that point in the wave formation. In here we have already passing the zero point and building the highest amplitude. And at that point, we almost finished with the full wavelength. Another example of the sine wave is a simple harmonic oscillator. That one 
is brought to our attention by Oleg Alexandrov, and it shows the dumped version of the sine wave. In part number two, we're going to concentrate ourselves on how possibly TK device work, what possibly cause the energy uh, to appear in the device. The device appears to be driven by one single impulse, and then there is no need for an external energy. So I, I put a drawing of uh, a two balls, which is the spark gap, and then showing the graphs, as you see from these two pictures, this is how the energy travels, and right next to the peak, we try to catch that energy from the right hand side of the spark gap. will not concentrate ourselves on heavy mathematics. Basically it's an, a concept, a thought experiment. Two balls. One is blue, one is yellow. Represent Sparga. Left hand side and right hand side of the Sparga. Apart from that, we have uh, two plates of the capacitor, somewhere in the middle. When we have a difference of potential, at first we create a first electron. And then we have a bunch of electrons created, not only because of the difference of potential, but because of the cosmic ray. Think about it as those two balls, there are a part of the spark gap, are always a, a part of the capacitor. So we have a free electron here, but if we were to have just the two plates of the capacitor and we will deliver from the left hand side a charge to the right hand side, then we would have a free electron in here. When free electron is present, then some of the atoms do not have enough of electrons, and some of them have more than enough. In liquids, we call them anions and cations. And then the electrons in plasma move always in pairs with ions. So we have a representation of ions in here. So you gotta understand that a size of electron comparing to the size of ion is like a small tiny bit of sound comparing to the big football pool. So when the plasma is created, then a heavy particles moves from the left hand side to right hand side. So let's make some summary how the spark gap creates a spark, how the plasma is created. And why is that happening? The large time jitter originates from this stochastic process. I remember from the music, staccato which is a tat 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 legato is tiri de da da hey, fine. so that caused the actual breakdown of the spark gap when an electric field is applied over the gap at some point in time a free electron will be created due to the cosmic background radiation called it cosmic ray at that point we should know the difference between photon which assume is to not have a mass, but is a representation of pure energy and the cosmic ray, which basically falls at the same criteria. 
with the difference is that photon cannot travel through your roof or your walls. It can, although, create ionization of the ionosphere, and that's why we have aurora. Cosmic ray could be discovered many kilometers beneath the ground of the Earth. So uh, it's a very interesting source of energy. So the free electron is accelerated by an applied electric field, gains energy, and eventually hits an atom. When the energy of the accelerated electron is high enough, this atom will be ionized and another free electron is created. The two electrons will be accelerated again, additional ionization will take place, and this way an electron avalanche is created. And finally, we have this avalanche and the additional process of streamer formation, a conducting arc channel will be formed, spanning the complete gap between the electrodes. A streamer is a narrow filamentary plasma driven by highly nonlinear space charge waves. This breakdown process is a stochastic process. The creation of the first free electrons is a stochastic and also the electron avalanche formation has a stochastic nature, causing the large shot to shot time instability and also limiting the rise time of the switch impulse. When we have the tiny tiny electrons pairing with the ions, and we're talking about moving mass, we have a hammering effect on the right hand side of the spark gap. And that would be right in here. We're trying to analyze what if a cosmic ray, when it strikes the electron and initiates the process, basically is a sustaining factor. And then if we could apply that sustaining factor to the mobility of TK device in the closed loop where one impulse of the energy was needed, and I've seen it in my own eyes, to have the device delivering 200 watts with no extra ener energy applied to the device by self-looping. Well, of course, we may talk about how frequent is cosmic ray, how frequent is the presence of a photon. Well, guys, we have a light. Light comes from the sun. Wouldn't be silly to ask how many times a photon as a particle comes in within one second. <laughs> so we may assume that the cosmic ray has the same principles of the same criteria. This is a maximum of the amplitude and it's represented here. But we need to catch that signal right before the highest peaks of the amplitude. That will be that curve in here going up. The energy addition the ionization interaction with the ambient field and a hammering effect that speeds up due to the acceleration. If you have a person who is already in motion and somebody pushed that person from the back, that energy of push adds to the energy of motion that is being called acceleration. Despite the fact of the energy distortion of creating any additional frequencies in within the spark up spectrum, then right in this point in here we should have energy more than energy from the left hand side. At that point, we will close the switch here. I'm trying to compare a delta T of 
particles in plasma and delta T of information sent through the electrostatic means. Character of the sine wave is gradual from zero up to zero down and then to zero. Our spark is triggered for a sine wave at the beginning of it. The electrostatic charge is rapid and is enriched in all of the harmonics created in the spark gap. All of these impurities that are there. Now we are creating also After the a temporal of the right magnetic field. Side switch, the right plate of the capacitor uh, receives the charge and the magnetic field. The next step is, is created to open a due to the right hand side rule. Contact here. It is impacting a plasma with all of the impurities the and the harmonic components. Due to the magnetic field, current in plasma as a conductive medium is created. Plasma is a coil. One could say how come we uh, try to create coil out of the plasma? Well, what is the coil? Every piece of the wire, even a straight one, has its own capacitance and it has its own inductance. So what is going to happen if we take 600 meters of wire that represent one quarter of wavelength and then we coil it from the straight wire to the certain diameter coil. What we would create is a capacitance between the windings and we will play with the inductance of that wire. At that point we may find out that the resonance frequency has changed even though the wire is the same length. Electrons by adjusting the ions, distance or any particles moving the adjusting the that parameters of spark that gap spark to the top gap. resonance frequency. Switching left and right switches is critical and has to be synchronized to the entire operation according to the signal delivered. Now we play with a magnetic field, which actually, now we go, going to a second assumption, is reacting as an accelerator of the particles. The same effect is utilized in nuclear magnetic resonance devices and or the various number of particles microscopes. So now, we're dealing with the acceleration <coughs> of the Y spin in nuclear magnetic resonance. The magnetic field creates cre uh, the electromagnetic force in the plasma, like it would create in a coil. The current that is flowing because of that influence is reacting as accelerating force. So, let's say we have a hammer and hammer is on the shelf and instead of just sliding the hammer from the shelf gently to the table, we decided that the 10 kilograms hammer is trapped. Now we have a force that would possibly break the table. that is a very similar to the hammering effect that is happening in plasma. So, at X part, 
we have acceleration x2 more x3 more and then on the right hand side we have all of these effects added so now we're opening uh, the switch on the left hand side we're closing on the right hand side we are right before the maximum of the impulse we send the information immediately as the static cannot be three quarter on left hand side and one quarter on one right hand side static is immediate we know build magnetic field all of the components and impurities of the spark gap with all of the harmonic frequencies that were created due to creation of the spark now influencing the magnetic field that is in between the plates of the capacitor I remind again that by tuning a distance between the plates of the capacitor we tuning the circuitry to the self resonance of the spark gap then we create a current in the conductive medium and we repeat a hammering effect again. We do have a dissipation of an agent, we do have losses in here, but we just assume that the amount of energy on the right hand side at the highest peak still pre uh, represents a significant difference of potential. Capacitor mentioned in this video does not necessarily look like a typical two plates capacitor. In next material I will try to bring to your attention number of schematics supposedly made based on Toyol Kapenaze existing devices and published on the internet already. Thank you very much. I wish you the best.